Jersey Jaguar back at you another video and today it's going to be one that I know we all have done or will do at some point and that is ship a jersey. So in this video I'm going to break it down within multiple segments in the same video to help move it along and to keep it short and effective. All right, so step number one is going to be why are you shipping this jersey? It seems basic, but it's really important. Are you trading a jersey with a friend? Are you sending a family member a present? Are you selling a jersey? Are you selling the jersey from friend to friend? Or are you selling it via third-party app like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or Mercari? Now, if you're selling on one of those third-party apps, it's extremely important to know their seller and buyer policies as well as any policies that you use in terms of transferring money like PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, etc. You guys got to know the inside and outs of these to save yourself and to save your buyer as well. Now guys, for any instance, if anything goes wrong, it's up to you to use good morals and judgment when shipping a jersey. All right, so step number two is going to be preparing your shipment. Now guys, carrying over from step number one, always make sure that your jersey is in the condition that you listed it as, all right, whether you're selling it or training it, etc. Now, once you get past that, we're going to actually need to fold the jersey. Now guys, I'm not going to go through step by step how to fold a jersey. I have multiple videos per sport on how to fold jerseys. Check them out. They're going to help you. With that said though, I'm going to show you really quick the general basics of folding a jersey. All right, guys, really quickly, bear with me. I'm sitting in an awkward position, but you're going to have the back of the jersey facing up. Take one side, fold it to the edge of the numbers. Take the second side, fold it to the edge of the numbers. Always make sure everything's nice and even. Take the sleeves, fold them down. Take the other sleeve, fold it down. Bottom of the jersey, fold up to the back of the numbers. Top of the jersey, fold to the back of the numbers. Boom. All right, so now that we got the jersey or jerseys folded and ready to go, it's time to move on to step number three. All right, so starting with step number three, we're going to have an extremely important step within the process, and that's actually going to be packaging your shipment. Now, to start off with packaging your shipment, we're going to have to choose the right box or package for your jerseys, all right? So with that said, we're going to have to know how to take dimensions of your items all right guys so it's always going to start by length meaning how long the jersey is by width how long the jerseys are by height how tall the jerseys are based off that we could choose the correct packaging all right so now that we have the dimensions we are going to have to choose the proper packaging now guys something that's going to be extremely contingent on what type of packaging you're going to use is how much the total value of your package is going to be worth if you got 120 dollars jersey in there you could get away with a bubble mailer or a poly mailer now if your jersey's worth a few hundred bucks you're probably going to want to get a box for that even if it's a small thin jersey and probably want to get it fully insured so let's say we're going to want to ship a jersey and a poly mailer just for example you're going to want to make sure that that jersey is as close to the edges as possible. Meaning that there's not too much open area within that package for your jersey to move around. If your jersey has too much space to move around, like some famous companies that we know that ship to us, that jersey is going to unfold and it's going to get wrinkled in places that you don't want, making that jersey less appealing. And also at the same time, if your box or package is too small, it could crease the jersey in places that you don't want to. So you want to have the right size now in terms of the packing process you could also put your jerseys in some kind of clear plastic or a ziploc bag it's going to help protect the jerseys a little bit more all right so a finished jersey inside of a box right for the size is going to look something like this and then for a poly mailer it's going to look something like this all right so step number four is going to be choosing the right carrier now guys we got usps we got UPS, FedEx, DHL. Things that are gonna make a difference is going to be the weight, the overall size of the package. If you're shipping internationally, how much insurance you want, etc. So for me personally, I prefer to use USPS, specifically priority. Now for USPS, you could get free priority packaging 
as well as express packaging in terms of bubble mailers, poly mailers, and boxes. Now be aware though that they have flat rate priority and non-flat rate priority boxes and materials. So if you're gonna go flat rate, if you could fit maybe let's say five or six jerseys into one box, go ahead and get the flat rate. But if you're only gonna ship one or two jerseys, it might be cheaper to do non-flat rate. So always get a price quote first. Now guys, keep in mind over a certain size in terms of dimensional size, it's gonna start charging you too. Usually over 13 inches per side, they might start charging you more. Guys, I cannot stress enough, if you are selling a jersey or even shipping a jersey in general, always fully insure it, all right? So if something goes wrong and it's not fully insured, you're not gonna get anything back. Now, if you got priority shipping, you get $100 automatic. If your jersey's insured for over $500, I believe, you get automatic signature confirmation. Guys, I recommend if you're shipping something over 200 bucks even, pay for the insurance and pay for signature confirmation. If you do need to do a claim, you're gonna be required to show proof of purchase, proof of value, and a bunch of other things. I could get into that in another video. Now, for whatever reason, if you wanna go with FedEx and UPS and you wanna fully insure it, make sure that you have them use their materials and have them package it and fully insure it. I seen when you pack it yourself and you still fully insure it, they find every reason to try to deny you. Let them pack it with their own materials and their own way of doing it. All right, so if you're shipping internationally from the United States to another country, uh, you're gonna have to fill out a declarations form. All right, guys. Now, a lot of times when you ship to foreign sellers, regardless of your selling or shipping for whatever reason, those sellers usually ask you to put a lower declaration value because the higher the value, the more taxes they have to pay. Make sure that you're fully clear and transparent with them that if anything happens to that package, it's only gonna be worth what the value is, all right? It's out of your control. If both of you are cool with that, that's on you, go ahead and proceed. But always make sure that you and the recipient have a clear and open communication. So again, a USPS, you're gonna to have to fill out this form. If you go to UPS or FedEx, again, they will type it in for you. Also keep in mind, if you're going to use those free USPS priority or express materials, that you could only use those materials for Priority or Express. You cannot use them for any type of shipping service. All right, so let's recap. First, you need to figure out why you're shipping the jersey and who you're shipping it to. You need to figure out the value of it. Now, when you go to prepare the jersey, which is step number two, make sure it is the way you described it to your seller, or if you're sending it as a surprise, make sure it's in good condition. Now, you need to properly fold your jersey to get it ready to put into a package. Then we need to measure the jersey or jerseys to see what kind of packaging we need. We get a package that's appropriate for what we need, put in the box, tape it up, bring it to USPS, FedEx, UPS, whatever. And then we go ahead and choose the best route available in terms of logistics and carrier. Once you've done that, you're off to ship your jersey. So as a couple added tips, I cannot stress enough to always save your receipts to have the tracking on there. If there's an option to send tracking to your email and print a receipt, do both. For whatever reason, if there's any problems, you're going to need that tracking number. All right, there you go. As you can see, shipping a jersey has a few steps to it, but if you perfect it, it's going to save you in the long run. Guys, if you enjoyed my video, I'd appreciate it, like and subscribe. And most importantly, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to get to those. And also, if there's a video you'd like to see me do in the future, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get it done. I'll see you at the next one.